Let's work through some numerical examples. One idea is that you can compute functions backwards. A table containing the inputs to a function can be used to map from output to input. So we'll first create a table of all pairs of integers from 1 to 50. How do we do that? Well, we create table pairs. We use a recursive local table to actually enumerate the different integers, which we'll store in a table called i with a column n, which includes 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5, all the way up to 50. Then we select two columns, a.n and b.n, as x and y, from the integer table twice. And in this case, we'll make sure that we don't get repeats by having a.n less than or equal to b.n. So we only have 2, 3, we don't have 3, 2. What integers can I add or multiply together to get the number 24? Well, we can figure that out directly. So here I have the table of pairs that I just described. I've loaded it in, and then if I select what are the x and y from this table of pairs, where x times y equals 24, it will just compute all the possibilities. 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 4 and 6. I could also figure out which numbers you can add together to get 24. And it will list all those as well. well let's do another example. Pythagorean triples. Pythagorean triples are triples of integers such that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. In a right triangle, they describe the relationship between the lengths of the legs and the length of the hypotenuse. And we could enumerate all the Pythagorean triples up to some maximum value. How would we do that? Well, we would say with i, n as select 1, union select n plus 1, from i, where n is less than 20. So this just gives the integers from 1 up to 20. We want to select three columns, a dot n, b dot n, and c dot n, from some joined table expression where we have some criterion. Spend a second to think about what goes in the blanks. I'll show you in 3, 2, 1. We need to join together three different copies of the i table, because we need to be able to talk about three integers at the same time. And then if we look at the output, we'll see that 3, 4, 5 is in there, but 4, 3, 5 is not in there. So we need some specification that a dot n is less than b dot n. Less than or equal would also work. There are no Pythagorean triples that have equal a and b. We all knew this moment was going to come when we talked about the Fibonacci sequence again. Computing the next Fibonacci number requires both the previous and the current numbers. So here's what we want. We want the table of all Fibonacci numbers starting at 0, and we'll include 1 twice because it's there twice, and we'll have 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, etc. We can generate that with the following SQL statement. Create a table fibs as a local table, fib previous and current. Previous and current starts out with 0 and 1. And then we select current and previous plus current from fib. We need some condition to tell us when to stop. And we need to select just one column from fib in order to get a one column table. Spend a moment to think about what goes in those blanks. We can figure out this blank by looking at the fact that there's a 0 here. And 0 is bound to previous. And then every other row is going to be greater than 0. So the only way to get out the 0 and then the 1 and the 1 is to select the previous column from the previous current fib table. Now we'll take a look at the condition that tells us when to stop, which is based on the current row's input row's current value, which is the second column here. So when the current is, say, 13, then previous will be set to 13. 
which is a row we want to include. So we want to include the number 13. This has to be less than or equal to 13. Now, will any number do, like 14 or 15 or 16? Sure, as long as it's smaller than the next Fibonacci number, which is 21. So we could put any number we want in there, as long as it's between 13 and 21. One last example. The mathematician, G.H. Harding, once remarked to the mathematician, Srinivasa Ramanujan. He said, I rode here in a cab, and the cab number was 1729. Such a dull number. Srinivasa responded, no, it is a very interesting number. It is the smallest number that is the sum of two perfect cubes in two different ways. So how shall we find all of the numbers that are two perfect cubes summed together in two different ways? So we're creating a table of interest. We're going to use a with clause in order to define the cubes of x, y, and the cube of x and y summed together as exactly what I just said. Select x and select y and select x times x times x plus y times y times y from pairs. This isn't recursive. It's just a way for us to refer to the sum of the cubes of two integers. Now we can select a dot x, a dot y, b dot x, b dot y, and the cube from cubes as a, cubes as b, where the a and the b are different, and the sum of their cubes are the same. So let's give these columns some names so that we can refer to them. In particular, let's call this the sum of cubes. Then we can select star from the interest table, order by the sum of cubes. Get the smallest one first, and it will say that 1729 is 1 cube plus 12 cubed, or 9 cube plus 10 cubed. And the next largest one is 4,104. 2 cubed plus 16 cubed, or 9 cubed plus 15 cubed, etc. And we can see the whole list up to 110,000. 